What is the Trinity and is it biblical? Great question. Let's answer it right now. The Trinity is the Christian belief that there is one God who exists as three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Jesus being the Son. Now, the word Trinity actually is not found in the Bible whatsoever, but the concept is definitely there. Similar to how the word monotheism is not found in the Bible, the belief in one God, yet the belief in one God is definitely taught in the Bible. It's helpful to recognize that the Trinity was not invented by church councils. It's a thoroughly biblical concept. Just like Isaac Newton, didn't invent the forces of gravity, he just defined them. And so church councils simply recognized what was already in the Bible very clearly. I'm going to show you, first of all, the divinity of all three persons of the Godhead with passages in the Bible and show you how it formulates the idea of one God and three persons. Take a look. Now, first of all, is the Father God? Now, this is repeated quite a lot throughout sacred scripture. Paul starts his letters off usually by saying, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And so right there we see God our Father, referring to the Father being God. It's also what Jesus Christ himself said in John 17, 3. He said, this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God. And he's referring to the Father. So the Father is definitely God. One that's a little bit more controversial is Jesus God. Well, let's take a look at the Bible. In Titus 2.13, it says, Waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Who's described as God and Savior? Jesus Christ is. In Hebrews 1.8, we see the Father talking to the Son here, and he says, But of the Son, he says, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of uprightness is the scepter of your kingdom. The Father calls Jesus God. Another instance in the ministry of Jesus, we see Jesus rose back to life from the dead, and Thomas initially didn't believe that he did. And so Jesus appears to Thomas, and he says, Put your finger here and see my hands. Put your hand out and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you've seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now notice what Thomas called Jesus, both Lord and God. And Jesus doesn't rebuke him for calling him Lord and God, saying, what are you talking about? No, he affirms it, saying, you finally believed. Jesus, too, throughout his ministry, claims to be God. He claims to be the I Am, the very God who spoke to Moses in the burning bush. And the Jews he was speaking to understood exactly what he was claiming. And that's why it says, the Jews answered him, It is not for a good work that we are going to stone you, but for blasphemy, because you, being a man, make yourself God. So even to the audience who Jesus was preaching to, they understood he was definitely claiming to be God. John Waitin has a very interesting line when it says, No one has ever seen God. The only God who is at the Father's side, he has made him known. Who's the only God at the Father's side? Jesus Christ. Is the Holy Spirit God? In Acts chapter 5, we have an instance where two people, Ananias and Sapphira, had lied about how much money they sold for a property. They lied to the church about that. And Peter confronts them about their lie. And Peter says, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back for yourself part of the proceeds of the land? Okay, so notice that they lied to the Holy Spirit. And then the next verse, he says, you have not lied to man, but to God. Ooh, interesting. You have not lied to man, but to God, showing therefore the Holy Spirit is God. Now, some people like the Jehovah's Witnesses will say that the Holy Spirit is simply God's active force, like some sort of impersonal force. But the fact that you can lie to the Holy Spirit shows that the Holy Spirit is not a force. You can't lie to a force. You can only lie to persons, so showing that the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Godhead. The Bible says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit even says that the Holy Spirit speaks as the Holy Spirit says. And so what we've just seen is that all three persons, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, are God. You might be thinking, okay, does that mean three gods? No, because as I mentioned, Christianity is a monotheistic religion. We believe in one God. It says that in Isaiah 45 verse 5, I am the Lord and there is no other. Besides me, there is no God. Only one God. How does the Father being God, the Son being God, and the Holy Spirit being God, how does that mean that there's only one God still? What it means is that all three persons share the same substance. They are the one being. And that's why all three can say they are God. And yet, they are still three distinct persons. A Trinitarian formula you can find in the Bible is in Matthew 28, verse 19, where Jesus says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, showing equality between Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And notice it didn't say in the names 
of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, but in the name singular, showing one being, yet still three distinct persons. It's important to realize then that the Father is not Jesus, nor is Jesus the Holy Spirit. That would be a heresy called oneness, and it doesn't line up with what the Bible teaches. Jesus said he's going to be at the right hand of the Father. That would make no sense if he was the Father. Jesus said to his Father, Take this cup away from me, yet not my will, but your will be done, showing a distinction between Jesus and the Father. At the baptism of Jesus, you see all three persons being present. Jesus was getting baptized, the Spirit came down like a dove, and the Father's voice was from heaven, This is my beloved Son. So all three persons simultaneously present, showing that the Father is not Jesus and Jesus is not the Holy Spirit. And so we can see the Trinity is not a man-made invention. It's thoroughly biblical. There's even more passages that show it than even what I've been able to show in this short video. But at least this will get you started, showing that there is one God, and he is the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.